We're now officially in circle geometry. We're going to be drawing lots of circles and thinking lots about um, the properties that these circles have. And circles are amazing. Circles are incredibly simple shapes. Um, but because of their simplicity, much like a square, I suppose you could say, is a simple shape. It's like, oh, there's not much you know, that can be um, changed in a square. Circles have all these marvelous symmetries and um, other kinds of properties we can take advantage of. Now, that's both a blessing and a curse. What that means is there are lots of circle properties. There are lots of circle properties. Think about it the opposite, I guess, would be something like this. Trapeziums, right? Um, trapeziums are weird shapes. Not that many properties. There aren't that many things where, it's, where there's symmetries you can take advantage of. But circles have symmetries everywhere, right? You sort of like um, shake a tree and a, and a circle property comes out. That's how many there are. It's sort of about 15 to 20 that you have to know. When I first learned them, uh, it can be quite overwhelming there being 15 to 20. This is one of the things where um, we give you formulas or the reference sheet. We give you no circle properties. These all have to be up here, okay? So to help you try and remember them, what I'm gonna give you right at the get-go, we're gonna spend like one and a half weeks-ish on this, is I'm gonna give you some groups into which the properties fall. So it's not just a list of 15 to 20 random separated things, but you can see they're sort of gathered into categories, okay? Each of the categories is based on a feature of a shape, uh, of a circle, rather. So here are the categories. I've got a few here. The first one are what we call chords. We're gonna draw all of these in a second. So within a circle, if you take any two points on the circumference and join them, you get a chord. And there are a whole bunch of chord properties. That's what we're gonna focus on this lesson, okay? After we look at chords, and some of these do overlap, I should point out, we're gonna focus on angles. Angles within a circle fall into two categories as well. They fall into angles on the circumference and angles at the center. So we'll come back to those shortly. <coughs> Excuse me. Where'd my list go? Okay, after that, we talk about these shapes called cyclic quadrilaterals. Whenever we describe a shape as cyclic, what we mean is that all of the points of that shape, might be a triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, whatever you like, all of the points, the corners, the vertices, are on the circumference of a circle. That's what makes it cyclic, okay? Cyclic quadrilaterals tend to be the most interesting ones. What's next? Uh, tangents and radii. So intervals and straight lines. Again, there's a bunch of properties that sort of attach to these guys. Segments. There's really only one property that relates to segments really closely, but there's, like I said, these overlap, so we'll, this sort of, if you want to put a dotted line, connects back to our work on angles. And the last major category that we have a look at is intercepts. You might recall from last Friday we thought about intercepts. Intercepts are parts of intervals, right? When we're talking about uh, plane geometry rather than the Cartesian plane. Intercepts don't refer to like x and y. There's no x and y that we're talking about here. We're talking about parts of lines, parts of intervals on a circle. So let's draw some of these, just so you have um, an idea of this. You'll need a fairly big circle here, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put lots of different features on this, just to remind you of what, this, um, what, this what all these different shapes are. So draw yourself a nice big circle. Yeah, it's all right. I've drawn better. Um, <coughs> Little trick, it's actually much easier to draw a big circle than a little circle. So when you draw a little circle, you're like, mine's all wavy. It's because it's small. Big circles, it's easy. You just sort of wave your arm around and there you go. Okay, so I said I was going to draw you a picture of these because they'll be much more helpful than just the words. So the most important part of a circle is its center. That's where, is that in the center? It's a bit off the edge, isn't it? Let's put, move that over a little bit. There we go. So the center defines the circle. You've got a point, and then, oh, that went further over, didn't it? Uh, this is hard to do when you're right next to it. Anyway, that'll do. You've got all of these points out here, which are equidistant from the center, and that's what comprises your circle. So all of those points on the edges, we call them the circumference, of course.
Uh, we'll point out as well, it's not really the focus of this topic. This topic is about proof and logic, much more than it's about measurement, but sometimes you'll need to know these formulas for a circle. Um, you know, you guys know the circumference is 2 pi r, and of course the area, which is the other formula, is pi r squared. So you've known these for a long time, okay? Center circumference, those are the most important features. Then let's just start to go through this list. So chords, what's a chord? Here's a chord. As I mentioned, the chord joins two points on the circumference. That's a chord. You can actually also have chords of parabolas and chords of hyperbolas as well. And all they mean is it's an interval that joins two points on said shape. Uh, we talked about angles at the circumference, angles at the center. So if you have another color there, that would be helpful. Here's an angle at the circumference. That guy there, that's an angle at the circumference. So you can see it's got its legs standing on the circumference, but also its vertex, its middle point, is also on the circumference. What does an angle at the center look like? Something like this. I'll draw it off the same chord. There's an angle at the center. Okay. Now, uh, this is reminding me of some other language that's helpful. We said the circumference is this curvy thing around the edge. We said that chord is that straight interval joining two points on the circumference. You can also have a curved section that joins two parts on the circumference. And we would call that, starts with an A, does anyone know? An arc, very good. So those two angles that I just drew in orange, we would call both of those angles standing on that arc. Let me say that again. These guys are angles that stand on this arc. You can almost imagine them kind of like the legs of a stick figure, and they're standing on the two edges of the arc. Okay. So we've got chords, we've got some angles flying around. Ooh, here's something helpful. A chord has blocked off two different sections of this circle. And we call these sections segments, right? Because you've got a smaller part of it and a bigger part, we would call this guy over here the minor segment. Up here, shaded in green. That's the minor segment, which of course makes the other side the major segment. Minor segment, major segment, both of them are cut off by a chord. What else do we need to include here? You want to throw some shapes at me? I've sort of gotten you started. What other kinds of words, and I've got some on the board, would you like me to put on there? And where are they? Say that again. A secant. Okay, secant's not on there. What is a secant? Um, a secant, secant, S-E-C, -E we actually talked about this back in calculus, is a line that cuts across, right? Like that's what section means. Section, secant, um, like a, a C section when a, when a woman has to give birth and they sort of cut across in order to deliver the baby. So therefore, we've got some space down here. Here's a secant. There you go. So it cuts right across. Very closely related to a secant. Again, think of your calculus. What's another straight line related to a circle? A tangent. Very good. So I'll put this one over here. As we mentioned before, tangent, just like the word tangible, it means it just touches, just touches, uh, and then it leaves off. Okay, what else have we got here? Actually, we've got some things that I've, I've drawn in, but I haven't labeled them. Maybe I should have started this. What, what's this? What's this interval here? Center, yeah, good, radius. It's so well known, I guess, so got, sort of forgot to mention it. Eric, you had your hand up. Did you have a different feature to mention? A radius down to that tangent. I promise we will come to a radius onto that tangent later on uh, when we get to here. And it does give you a very important feature. For now, since I've got, I've actually already got two radii on here, I might leave it off. This is getting pretty busy already. Anything else on here? Anything else? Yeah, Amaya. 
A sector, okay, so what's a sector? How would you describe a sector to someone who's never seen a sector before? Is there a kind of shape similar to a sector? Yeah, Russell? Yeah, kind of. So let's draw one. Where have I got some space? I've got some space over here. So this shape here, and I'll shade it in like this. This shape in here, this is a sector. I always think of them as slices of pizza. That's kind of the shape that you've got there. So I'm going to go right in the middle and label that sector. Sectors are easy to confuse with segments. So segments are defined by chords. Sectors are defined by radii. Okay. What do you think? How does that look? Are you reasonably happy? Is there anything we're missing? Is the sector also part of a major segment? Is the sector part of a major segment? <clears throat> Every sector is in a segment, but it depends on where you draw the chord. Like, in this case over here, I've got this major segment and I've got this minor segment, but I've got other segments as well. Um, I've got the segment cut off from this orange line up and down, or I've got the segment right up here, this tiny one, and below it, which is a really, really big one. So yeah, I guess there one is in the other, but I don't think, there's nothing really useful that comes out of that, so we don't really point it out very much. Okay, what do you think? Are you reasonably happy with that? Yeah? I'm okay with that. So, um, mm, I will put on one more thing. I'll put on one more thing. Because I, I, I named it here, intercept. Where might you find intercepts? Okay, so I'm going to have a look at, say, actually, there is something we're missing. There is something we're missing. Let's extend this guy all the way across. Again, it's so basic, we forgot to really say it. When you go all the way across from one end to the other, you get a? Diameter, very good. And I'm going to use this diameter to point out. <clears throat> let's maybe put some names on here because starting to get so busy, I can't really talk about this line, that line. So let's call, I should stay with orange. Let's call this diameter AB. It's customary to call the center of the circle O, though when you start to get more than one circle um, around, they get called X, Y, whatever. So diameter AB. <clears throat> Do you notice that it intersects with the chord, let's call it, say, PQ. You see that? AB and PQ, they intersect. When they intersect, they create intercepts. Just like when the transversal intersected with those parallel lines, it created intercepts. So if I give one more name to a point, AB, PQ, let's call this guy M because he's somewhat in the middle. AM and MB. Do you see them? AM and MB. Those guys are intercepts, right? Uh, PM and MQ. Also intercepts. And as it happens in this particular circle, actually in all circles, those intercepts are related in a really interesting way. So we will come to those in due time.